Yeah, I'm going through with these uh, comments on Facebook and YouTube. It's quite interesting from the last show I did on Creflo Dollar and his coming out with this uh, reversal of his tithing teaching. A few people want to know why why are we talking about Creflo. He's just one guy. Hmm. Oh, you know, I, I don't know the guy. Does it even matter? Yeah, it does matter. And it's a cop out to say that it doesn't matter. It's a, it does matter because we're one church. At least we're supposed to be one church. Creflo over there at the World Dorm, Dome, over there and with you, Atlanta, have a lot of members there who are your brothers and your sisters, your mothers and your fathers, your uncles and your aunties. One church. Creflo belongs to us. One church. Doesn't matter where your church is located, no matter the city or the state or the country or the hemisphere, it don't matter. One church. You understand? And this is why Paul wrote the letter to the Corinthians. And they were talking about, I'm with Apollos. I'm with Barnabas. I'm with Paul. And all this stuff. He says, uh, all these factions. We, I wasn't crucified for you. He said, we are supposed to believe the same thing that we're divided on a whole bunch of stuff based off of one book. So why are we talking about Creflo? Because it's one church in whom this man has uh, this persuasion over millions of people who tune in on the TV and on YouTube and whatever, however they get their, their Christian source. They tune in and then they bring that mess back to your church. It is the roach spray or that powder uh, that they would put down. Now they got this little tube where they put down this little glue substance for roaches. And that the, the roaches will go and the adults would eat of that stuff and then they bring it back to the nest and feed it to the babies and the whole nest die. That's what Creflo was doing for many years. He was, he had put that mess out there and then y'all was bringing it back to your local churches feeding it to your babies, and you were dying. Now's my turn. See you in 60. Bass. It's the show that will get you thinking And where the topics are hot Feel free to comment whether we agree or not, cause he's got something to say. Sir Walter Jones, Sir Walter Jones, he's got something to say. Sir Walter Jones, Sir Walter Jones Jones. Come on in. The water's fine. Yeah. Oh. Woo. Hi. Hello, everybody. So Walter, so Walter Jones Show. I'm here. It is the evening edition. Baby. Come on in. The water's fine. Water's fine. How y'all is? All these bunkers out here. A whole bunch of you coming in here. Okay. I don't really have time to read a whole lot of the comments. Uh, because I got to get into this teaching because this is part two, part two, part deuce of my tithe teaching. Tonight I was supposed to do part two of my birthday celebration, the best of the Sir Walter Jones show, but mm, I had to put it on hold. I'm going to do it Friday night, all right? But I want to get get this in because based off of the many comments off of the tithing show, people wasn't as upset as they were inquisitive. Hear me. For the first time, since the time I've been teaching on tithing, I'm seeing now that the Lord is working. It took a big, great, influential man like Creflo to cause people to say, if he can turn, then there must be something about this tithing I need a little bit more on. So I had to stop the presses for tonight based off of the many comments that came in and says, you know what, I may need to rethink this, and now I must 
leap into action. So we're going to call this a tithing master class. Think uh, uh, Marshall, my dear friend Marshall, who said, call it a master class. And so that's what we're going to do here. For tonight, tomorrow night, Wednesday, and Thursday, to get you to see. Now, for those of you who were worried about us because of the shooting in Highland Park, um, it, it's not in Chicago. Let me show you a map here for those of you who, who might have studied it. Highland Park is, is up here, way up here. This is Chicago here. This is central Chicago here. I live way down here, okay? All right, this is the south side where I live. This is Midtown here. This is where downtown Chicago is. And then Chicagoland area does this. It is big. It's called Chicagoland because part of Indiana, which is, which is further down, you can't see it down over here, yeah, Indiana is part of, it's called, it's called Chicago land. Absolutely. All right. So it would actually take me right now one hour to get uh, to, to uh, Highland Park, which is up here in a sleepy town, uh, up um, high scale, you know, them folk there don't make twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year. I mean, these are some folks that, that are pretty well off. My church is here, in Evanston. All right. So every Sunday morning, it, it's a nice little trail for me to go to church. OK. And so it's up there right here where it's uh, it's it's uh, it's pretty far. But yet uh, these they that's it's in an area that they've never many of them says we never heard a gunshot. Never. So when people say, oh, Chicago's at it again. It's not really Chicago. Let's get to let's get to this Creflo thing. All right. I, I, I need y'all to see and know um, uh, that the topic here is called how can the church survive without tithing? I get this question all the time. It's the same question that people were getting when they were trying to say defund the police department. Now, I was against all that defunding police department because the first person I needed when someone broke in my house was the same cops in whom y'all said defund. OK, last week I told you told y'all that the church is ran by a bunch of illiterates. This is why we're having these conversations today. A bunch of illiterates are running the church. That's why they're still talking about tithing. It's amazing how educated people are and they can't read and comprehend a book that is older than <laughs> almost older than life itself. <laughs> it's, it's just amazing how you can comprehend all of these new novels and some of the old novels and you can go in, you can watch Netflix and and, and uh, Amazon Prime uh, and HBO and all this stuff. And you can look at a TV show, a subscription show and watch it one time and be able to analyze every part of that movie. And then go and, and go on YouTube. I mean, go on social media, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and tweet about all of the intricacies of that popular movie. Some superhero movie. You, I mean, you know that the beginning, the, the, the prequel, the sequel and all this. Stuff. I mean, you can go through there and, and do that. I mean, it's just amazing how you were able to dissect and analyze these movies the way you do. Even the producers, I've seen how y'all have broken down movies and the producers be like, wow, how were you able to do that? You went right into my mind. As a matter of fact, you went in my mind and further past my mind. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that makes sense. That's how brilliant y'all are. Until somebody bring the word of God to you, you be like, duh, duh. this is what it says. Why you say that? Because your mama. My dear, your former pastor, your great grandfather who started that church 60 years ago, you heard from him or her. And so you're interpreting the scriptures based off of what somebody else said. And you don't do any kind of technical analysis by how you do when you watch these movies. You know the ending before they even get to the ending. That tells me something about you. We, this church is being ran by a bunch of illiterates. Mm -hmm. So Creflo said that he has not been confronted with the grace, the gospel of grace. Hear what he said. I'm not going to play it again. You got to go to Sunday show. He says 
He's changing his teaching because he has not been confronted with the gospel of grace. That is the most egregious, most silliest, most dumbest, most stupidest thing that any 60 year old mega church prosperity pastor could ever say to you. And those people in that arena soaked it in. They ate it up. And they said, hmm. He may be on to something, and some of you did the same thing. Amazing how someone can trick you like that, that he has not been confronted with the gospel of grace in the dispensation of grace that we're in today. Ignorance is no excuse of the law. I've been telling you that forever. It is no excuse for someone to be a Bible teacher to say, I didn't know. How is this possible? I'm going to show y'all that scripture in just a minute. One of the greatest feelings that I have that come over me is when I give to the needy. Because I don't believe that God can work with anybody who's stingy. You understand? So when I give to the needy, those who are destitute, those who need, it is a great joy that comes over me when I do. And when I give to a church offering, I rather give to the benevolent offering, that first offering that's selected, that's collected, the benevolent offering and uh, the missions offering is the one that I really take Pride and joy giving to that one. Then, then the general offering, the any after offering, the, the evangelist offering, I get more joy giving to that offering. And if you look in the comment section on my YouTube channel on, on the first show I did on this, there's a very disturbing comment on my YouTube channel. I'm not going to show you the person's um, thingy because their people just might be watching and then that person is going to get pushed into uh, the office and say, you know, we're going to have to do something about you exposing us, blah, 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 blah. But her comment said, my pastor has a Ph.D. from a prestigious university. She mentioned a college. Yet he still preaches tithing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, not, that's not as hardcore as what she's getting ready to say. Then she said, he took away the benevolent offering option because too much money was being donated. That comment made me cry. He took away the benevolent offering, the missions offering, because y'all was raising too much money for the poor. It is the saddest comment I have ever read in my entire life since the launching of YouTube. It is the saddest thing I have ever seen. How could this be? How could this be? And I remember... Leaving church after church was so good and we were shouting and, and enjoying each other and, and the fellowship of, of the Lord. And four or five of us got in the car and we were driving home and we stopped off at a Checkers restaurant. I don't know if y'all have Checkers there. It's a burger joint. All right. This was many years ago. And I remember we, we pulled into the, uh, the, the drive through And I'm sitting behind the driver. Okay, I'm sitting behind the driver. Uh, yeah, and so the the driver asked everybody, "Y'all go ahead and place the order." And each person placed the order to the the, the woman in the window, and, they, and and blah blah blah. A homeless woman walked up to the car and walked up on my side. Okay, and. Because I had to remember where the driver was. But yeah, the, the, because of where the window was, the driver was on the opposite side. So the woman walked up to me and she says, Sir, could, could you spare a dime or whatever she said? 
I said, uh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to give money, but we're at a restaurant. Why don't I just order you a burger? She said, okay, order me a burger. No problem. I said, sir, a uh, ma'am, can you add an extra burger to my order? Okay. No problem. So while a woman was standing there waiting on the order, I began to talk to her. I said, boy, I tell you, it's, it's just, you're such a beautiful woman out here on the streets by yourself. I mean, surely you, it's dangerous out here. You should be somewhere where you'd be safe. And the girl looked at me and cussed me out. You mother boop, boop, boop. Kiss my bloop, bloop, bloop. Go to hell, you bloop, bloop, bloop. I sat there and took it. And the people in the car, from the driver to all of the all of the people in the car, were saying, "Cancel her order. Don't give her nothing, ma'am. Cancel her order." And I said, "Ma'am, do not cancel her order. As a matter of fact, supersize the order. I know this ain't McDonald's, but I need you to add a fry and a drink." And if you got an apple pie, add an apple pie to the to the order. They were like, huh? She just cussed you out. I said, yes, she just cussed me out. And when she gets through cussing me out, her belly going to still be moaning and groaning when she walk away. You see, because you all, just left church jumping and shouting and speaking in tongue and foaming at the mouth and singing high notes and what have you all of all this stuff and you come out of here and this girl is hungry and because she did a worldly thing we out there in the world worldly people do what worldly people do now you want me to cancel the order if Jesus had canceled his order on the cross we all would be jacked up today. I said, supersize it. Make it hot. I want to see the steam coming out of that, that wrapper paper. And it came out the window like I ordered it. And I passed it to the young lady. She grabbed the burger. She quickly took the wrapper off, took a bite, took the wrapper and threw it at me. And threw it in my face. <laughs> and then the people in the car were so pissed at me, not her. And we drove off. And they said, Brother Jones, I just I just don't understand. I I I ain't got that kind of I ain't got that kind of I said, that's what your problem is. I said, Guess you did y'all see what she did? Yeah, she threw that wrapper in your face. I said, Yes. After she ate the burger. She still had to eat. This is the problem with the church today. Bless you, Jay Red. Thank you for the super chat. This is the problem with the church today. It's the world is looking at us fighting over something that is elementary, my dear Watson. It's a distraction. <laughs> Ron, <laughs> at, least, at least you're honest, Ron. It's a distraction. Ignorance is no excuse of the law. Religion is sustained by two factors. Here's what Creflo Dollar said. Religion is sustained by two factors. Fear and guilt. Let's talk about the fear part. Fear tactics. They took you to Malachi chapter 3. And they told you that if you don't do these things, you will be cursed with the curse. And then they went to your house. And then they said that your lights will be shut off. Your gas will be shut off. God's going to get his. And they always brought up there's going to be holes in your bags. You're going to have holes in your pockets. They told you you're going to be driving down the street. God's going to get his money. And your tires are going to, you have a blowout in your tire. Mm-hmm. They talked about how you you go your engine is 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 going to explode. Mm -hmm. 
Anybody, anybody here heard that stuff before? Hmm. Or they, they, they talked about your, 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 your check is going to be shorted, or, or the, your, your tax check going. They're going. You're going to lose. They're going to lose your che- tax check down at the IRS. All kind of ridiculous mumbo jumbo crazy, backwards messology. All that stuff. Based off of their interpretation of Malachi chapter 3. You're going to be cursed. So then you must ask the question, what does the curse look like? What does it look like? No one can answer me about what does a curse look like. I have not paid a tithe in almost 20 years. And my bills have always been paid. Lights, no shut off. No gas shut off. No water shut off. The bank ain't ain't never said, we're coming to get your your house. The car people never said, I'm coming to repo your, your car. Never. Ever. In the almost 20 years, I have not tithed the way y'all been teaching tithes. Never. Am I cursed? Am I cursed? And what and if I am cursed, this is the greatest cursing feeling I've ever felt. Because I've been year after year getting myself out of debt. I am more out of debt than I've ever been in my entire life. I have a really good Faculty score. Am I cursed? And if so, I am the most successful cursed you've seen over 20, almost 20 years. They can't explain it. But they're going to keep preaching it and teaching it because that's all they know. So fear tactics, Kepler said. Then he said guilt. People felt like they were going to hell because they did not pay a tithe. And Pentecostals, y'all are the worst. You are apostolics and you church God in Christ and now you Baptist folks are barring this mess. Y'all are the worst. Because you told me if I don't speak in tongues, I ain't saved. And if I ain't saved, I'm going to hell. Which goes back to tongues. And then you told me if I don't pay a tithe, then I'm going to be cursed and I'm going to go to hell. Wait a minute. How many things I need to do extra outside of Jesus dying on the cross? He dies on the cross and now I got to do a whole bunch of other stuff. You told me to get baptized. I did that. Now I've got to speak in some kind of foreign language. Oh, I ain't saved. And so people live their lives. I know people who live for 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years trying their best best to speak in a tongue. They went to every revival they can find and got on the altar just so they can go ta-ta-ta-ta and it didn't happen, it didn't happen. And they live their life testifying. Now y'all pray, y'all pray, y'all pray that one day I speak in this tongue that y'all, I see y'all doing. They live that life in fear and in guilt. And some people were on their deathbed after living uh, uh, 60 years saved. They were going there on their deathbed saying, I want to speak in tongue. I never got a chance to. Will God receive me? God's going to hold you responsible for that mess. Because you didn't speak in tongue. So it's the same thing with tithe. You made people feel. And they, uh, they went the rest of their lives feeling inadequate. And then what y'all do in church is you got a you got an offering envelope and a tithe envelope. Yeah, first of all, it's not enough trees, all right. So why y'all using all these trees for two offerings, for for two places to put money? Tithe and offering makes no sense to me. If the Bible says that give a tithe, if that's money, then the Bible says give an offering. That's money. Was God double talking? Why would he say, give money? You robbed me in money and money. 
It just, I don't think y'all understand how stupid your interpretation of the scripture is. It makes you look ignorance, ignorant to say that put two, put, put five dollars in this offering, put ten dollars in this offering, and this, this, this envelope that is, call this tithe, call this offering, they both money, then go to Malachi 3 and make these two money. Why wouldn't God say you robbing me in an offering, period? Or you robbing me in money? If tithe is money and offering is money, it makes no sense. Tithe always was food, always. And even in Malachi, he told you it was food because he said, so that there might be M-E-A-T in my house. What does that spell? Meat. What does M E A T mean opposed to M E E T? He didn't say so that you can meet the need. Well, that's offering. The offerings meet the need, but the M E A T meets the belly. Can't you see how silly you look now? You see it now, right? I want y'all to see this. I want you to see it. So let's go to James chapter 3 so that you can see why it's so important that everybody don't jump into this ministry. This is important. Everybody should not jump into this ministry. Look what he said here. Dear brothers and sisters, let me get my pen to work in here. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church. Who made you a teacher? Who? He said, don't do this. You just got saved yesterday, and now today you are a teacher in the church. 1 Timothy chapter uh, 3 says, you should not be a novice. You should be apt to teach he that desires the office of a bishop or supervisor or an elder or a presbyter all right he should be able apt to teach here he's saying not many of you should become teachers for we we who teach will be judged more strictly he said we all make mistakes for if we could control our tongue we would be uh, perfect and could also control ourselves in every way then he goes into that whole tongue thing. But your forked tongues were telling people that you're going to be cursed with the curse for doing something that's not even uh, for you. This is our problem today. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3. All right. And then I'm going to give you all the answer to why I'm, why I'm doing the title here. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. What does it say? Dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I would to spiritual people. I had to talk to you as though you belong to this world or as though you were infants in Christ. And some of you are learning this for the first time. You're still babes. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food. You ain't got tephuses yet. Because you weren't ready for anything stronger. And you still ain't ready. For you are still controlled by your sinful nature. Jealous of one another. Quarreling one another. Doesn't that prove that you are controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living uh, like people of the world? I'm a follower of Paul. I'm a follower of Paulus. I'm a follower of Creflo. All these factions. This is amazing to me that you all are still babies. You all, as many of you who are watching me, have at least an associate degree. Truly, truly amazing to me. Look what Hebrews chapter 6 says, and you can put this towards uh, tithing. Look at, look at his introduction. Let's, let's 
act like he talking about tithing because he could he could be talking about tithing here too if he wanted to. So let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again. He died on the cross and became a curse for us. And then you put him back on the cross and now we are a, a, a curse again? I don't understand that. This is the basic teaching, the basic tenets. He said, do we have to do this again? Let us go on instead of become uh, instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental. The fundamentals. Now he's talking about repenting from evil deeds, but this was the evil deed that y'all were teaching on tithing. It was evil because people went broke. They lost their houses to foreclosures because they needed to get to church and pay this 10% and give it to the church first and then find a way to pay their bills at home. That's an evil deed. Mm. He's talking about the fundamentals of baptism. Uh, you don't need further instructions about baptism. What about the laying on the hands? Do you need more instructions on that too? What? You do? You're still a baby. The resurrection of the dead? What about that? An eternal judgment? What about that? Y'all, you're 60 years old. And so, uh, God willing, we will move forward to further understand it. We're going to move forward. Then he said something so confusing to the saints here. <laughs> we can't do that one right now. We did that show. I'm not going to I'm not going to confuse y'all on that one. Can't do it. You can ask me later on that. Abraham in Genesis chapter 14 is uh where we're going to start this here. All right? Here's what some of the problems are. Is people saying, "All right, I don't tithe under the law, the Old Testament law. I tithe under the custom of law of, of tithing that is because tithing was before the law." True. Tithing was a custom. True. Ask, let me ask you a question, though. Do you do all of the customs in the Middle East? Or, or, or in this area here, there's no such thing as the Middle East, but I'm, I'm calling it that because that's what y'all call it. Do, do you do all of the customs? Why is it that the church only pick and choose certain customs? Hmm? And when you pick that custom, you don't even follow all of it. Because if you did, many of you will be dead today. I'm going to prove it to you when we get to Numbers chapter 18. You all pick and choose a custom to fit the law in which you were up under. You see, tithing have always been taught as a law. When you got older and more mature, you didn't want to walk away from what you were raised up to do because it feels funny to not do the same thing you've been used to doing because you are creatures of habit. So you've got to find a way to justify you doing an act. It's called cognitive dissonance. Y'all understand. So what you did was somebody brought up Abraham and you said, oh, yeah, 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 that's a great idea. Let me implement this and put this into my tithing perspective. Mm -hmm. So you decided I'm going to tithe by the way Abram, not Abraham. His name was Abram at that time, the way he did it. I, good. I'm clear now. Now I can continue tithing, even though when you get to your church, they're tithing under the law teaching. You're giving under, you think, under the way Abraham gave tithe. But you both are incorrect. The church today is not giving under Malachi 3 or the law because if you are given 10% of your tithe, you are robbing God. Hear me. If you are only given 10%, under the way you teach taught tithing today, you are robbing God. Tithing was not 10%. Over time, tithing was 23%. And most tithers do not tithe that way. They do not. Absolutely not. You're, you, you're about to lie in the comment section. You're about to tell a big face lie. So the people who are tithing the way Abraham tithed, 
None of them tithe that way. You, it is absolutely, utterly impossible to tithe the way Abraham tithed. Utterly impossible. You can't do it today. I'm going to show you you can't do it today. So Abraham rescues Lot. Lot gets his butt into trouble. Why? Because he moves to Sodom. Twin cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? All right? And he goes over there and the kings go to war. And then they capture Lot while they're warring against uh, the king of Sodom. They capture him and now his uncle got to go and rescue that boy. That's what all this is right here. Okay. And so Abraham goes over there. He chased the enemy. He captures the enemy. Uh, and he, 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 then he captures the spoil. He grabs back the spoil and he gets Lot and his family back. All right. That's what this is. In walks this person by the name of Melchizedek. He has no beginning, no ending, no mother, no father. And it looks like to us that this is a Christophany. Uh-huh. A Christophany. That's what it looks like who male is. Okay. You see his name again in Psalms 100 and I don't know, 100 somewhere, 102 somewhere, 101. And then you, see, you also see him in Hebrews. All right. All right. Outside of that. After Abram returned from his victory over uh, Kedor, Lamar, and all of his allies, see, his allies, Abraham had many allies, okay? The king of Sodom went out to meet him in the valley. Melchizedek, the king of Salem. Can you tell me what Salem means? Hmm? What does Salem mean? Huh? Jeru. Salem. Can y'all tell me what that means? Hmm? The king of Salem and priest of God most high. All right. They gave you all the hints there. That's right. The king of peace. King of righteousness. Yes. B um, let's see. Melchizedek brought Abram and brought Abram some bread and wine. Mm. Melchizedek blessed Abram with this blessing. You see the blessing here. Okay. You see that blessing here. Abram gave Melchizedek a tithe of all the goods he had. Wait a minute. Is that what y'all doing? All. A-L-L. -L. Abram gave him all. The goods he had recovered. What were the goods? It was spoil. You're going to see a lot of stuff that has a lot to do with eating. Y'all ain't no money. Wasn't no soul, wasn't no money. You, how foolish are you going to be? The king of Sodom said, Abram, he said, give back my people who were captured. But you may keep for yourself all the goods you have recovered. Abram replied to the king of Sodom, I solemnly swear to the Lord God most high, which is Melchizedek, creator of heaven and earth, that I will not take so much as a single thread or a sandal thong from what belongs to you. Thread and thong. Notice. I didn't see. I, I, I didn't see that. Otherwise, you might say, I am the one who made Ab Abram rich. I will accept only what my young warriors have already, what? Eden. And I request that you give a fair share of the goods uh, to my allies who helped me win this war. What's the answer here? You cannot tithe the way Abraham tithe. Why? Because Abraham went to war. Number one. And he tithes off of the booty. The spoil. 
Is that how you get your stuff? You have to go to war to get your stuff to tithe in church? You can't. You can't do that. Number two, he gave it all away. Number three, he gave it to a pagan king. It's impossible to type this way. You cannot. You can't. It would be like taking your getting a paycheck and giving it all the way and giving it to the world. You can't tithe by Abram. Abram. It's impossible. You get it? So then how are y'all tithing? There's only one other way that y'all are tithing. You are tithing under the law. <laughs> You're like, no, I just give, I just give, and then I tithe that way. No, tithe is not money, so you're not tithing. You're not tithing your time. You're not tithing this, that. No, tithing is always food. So you can't tithe anything else because what's in the name? The name tithe is always in the scriptures relegated to a food product. A produce. So you're not tithing anything. If it ain't food. And even when the scripture says. That. Uh, it used money one time. When it was mentioning tithe. I, I, I did that teaching Sunday. It says. Alright. You all are going to go to a place. Go into a place. Where there be. No more crying. Going to a place. Right here. Remember my notes from last week, uh, Sunday? Here, I, uh, here are four types of tithes. The Levitical tithe. The festival tithe is, is the other one here. This is the one where you pay you. I always tell y'all, pay yourself first. You pay you festival tithes. This is the tithe that actually go to you. Deuteronomy 14. Okay. And the Bible says, if the travel. Look at all that. This, this, this is, <laughs> look at all this. This look a mess. What, what was I doing? Okay. Number three is the poor tithe. Number four is the priest tithe. All right. But the Bible says that I want you to take a tithe and, um, and take it to a place that I'll show you. But if that place is too far for you to travel, because we're talking about a lot of food products. Lions, tigers, bears, <laughs> lambs, lamb chops, whatever. It's too far for you to travel. He said, take some money and do what with it? Can somebody tell me? Hmm? Take some money and do what with it? Because in today's vernacular, you would sell that stuff for money. Take the money. Go to the place where God told y'all to go for the festival. And then redeem. That means take the money and then buy food with it. And then eat the food. Y'all get it now. That's the only place in the scripture where money was in the same story as tithing was take the money and do something with that, that so-called tithe that you're going to offer. <laughs> Janelle said <say> EBT. <laughs> there you go. Take the money, buy uh, uh, when you get to the place, then buy. That means transfer it back to tithe, which is food, and then eat it. Which tells me again that tithe was never money. Money was only used as a means to get the tithe so that you can eat it. <laughs> so even today, how are y'all doing that in church? Sell your stuff, take that money, then turn around and buy more food. <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all getting this? It's just amazing to me that the church is being ran 
by a bunch of illiterates. I know y'all get upset when I talk about this. I don't care. I don't care what you say about me. Now watch this. Numbers chapter 18 is where tithe begin. Numbers chapter 18 is where tithe begin. They always go in Malachi chapter 3. But by the time you get to Malachi, it's too late. You are already cursed. <laughs> you are already cursed. You can't go to Malachi chapter 3 and do a tithing teaching. Who does that? You don't leave high school and then you go right to uh, uh, the, the fourth year and, and, and go into that class, the Ph.D. class, <laughs> and start trying to learn all that Ph.D. stuff. That's what you did with, with when y'all go to Malachi 3. There are no instructions other than it's too late. Because Malachi chapter 2 says, and this is to the priests. It's not even to you. So here's where tithe begins. Numbers 18, support for the priests and the Levites. Period. <laughs> Period. So if your pastor is collecting a tithe, uh, then he is up under the scrutiny of Numbers chapter 18. And if he own any land, he is robbing God. He should not be collecting the tithe, receiving the tithe. And Levites had to retire at the age of 50. Oh, man. All the sacred offerings and special offerings uh, presented to me when the Israelites lift them up before the altar also belong to you. I have given them to you as your sons and daughters. All right. I also gave the harvest gifts brought by the people of offerings to the Lord. The best of the olive oil, wine and grain. Not one time you see money here. Nowhere. Nowhere. All the first crop, everything in Israel that is uh, especially, uh, especially set apart for the Lord also belongs to you. You. The firstborn of every mother, whether a human or animal that is offered to the Lord will be yours. But you must also redeem your firstborn son, ceremony, unclean animals, redeem, redeem. Okay. Uh, however, you may not redeem the firstborn cattle. All right. The meat of these animals will be yours, just like the breasts. All right. Yes, I am giving you all these holy offerings that the people of Israel bring to you, bring to the Lord. That is, they are for you and your sons and your daughters to be what? Eaten as your permanent share, your permanent share. This is the uh, it's an eternal and unbreakable covenant between the Lord and you. And it also applies to your descendants, your pastors, your children. Your children's children, you Levites, that's musicians, uh, the doorkeepers, uh, the janitors, uh, all these folks, okay? And the Lord said, to Aaron, uh, your priest will receive, right here, no allotment of land. You can't own land, Pastor, if you're collecting the tithes or share of property among the people of Israel. Can't do it. I am your, I am your share and your allotment. God is. You understand? As for the tribe of Levi, your relatives, I will compensate them for their service in the tabernacle instead of an allotment of land. Sorry, you just can't. How are you pastors collecting the tithe and receiving it in your own land? I will give them the tithe from the entire land of Israel. Y'all, they can't read this in church. From now on, no Israelite except a priest and Levites may approach the tabernacle. Uh-oh. Uh oh, that's why I say if you read this and y'all the way y'all teaching tithe, most of you should be dead today. Dead. Dead. If they come near, they will be judged guilty and will die. Only the Levites may serve at the tabernacle. Y'all call yourself your church's tabernacles. Mm. Uh huh. And they will be held responsible for any offense against it. This is a permanent law for you. Permanent law. Permanent. Forever, y'all. 
to observe the generation to generation, the Levites will receive no allotment of land among them. Look at that, because I have given you the, uh, them, I have given them the Israelites tithes, which have been presented as sacred offerings. This will be the Levites share. That is why I said they would receive no allotment. The Lord told Moses, give these instructions to the Levites. When you receive from the people of Israel the tithe I have assigned as your allotment, give a tenth of the tithe you receive, a tenth of the tithe to the Lord. All right. Uh, a, sac a, a sacred offering. The Lord will consider this offering to be your harvest offering. This is why Malachi then says to you priests, you are the ones robbing God because you're not doing this. Are y'all getting it now? I wasn't talking to you all because then you all would die if you entered into the tabernacle. <laughs> you all would die. It wasn't for you. He was talking to the priests. And to you priests, this commandment is for you. Eagle insurance. I've got something for you. As though it were uh, the first grain from your own threshing floor. Uh, you must present one-tenth of the tithe received from the Israelites as the sacred offering to the Lord. All right. This goes on and on. I can explain this. All right. So when you bring, when they brought a tithe and gave it to the Levites, the people brought 10% of their tithe and they gave it to the Levite. And then the Levite turned around and gave uh, a, 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 a percentage to the priests. That's how the priests ate because the Levite gave it. The Levite gave it to the priest. The people, this is the people. The people gave to the Levite the 10. The Levite turned around and gave a percentage to the priest. Y'all get it now. That's what this is saying. All this right here. Mm -hmm. All this. One percent. I'll explain that later. <laughs> I'll explain that later. Is it making sense? You never heard this before? I get it. I understand. So my question to you then, based off of the title of this show, can the church survive without tithing? Yes. How else they've been surviving for a couple thousand years? Because tithing as it pertains to money didn't pop up until the late 1800s. Remember Charles Spurgeon talked about it in his, his sermon in eight, from 1888 uh, uh, or something like that. Remember I told you all about Spurgeon's sermon? April 1880 he had to speak about tithing because it crept up in the church. What is this thing y'all calling tithing and y'all putting cash to it? So he had to do a sermon. Is it making sense now? So what was the church? How was the church surviving from the first century church all the way to the 1800s? How were they surviving? If they wasn't receiving a tithe. Why? There is. The, the Jewish temple. Was destroyed. Which means. No Levites. No priests. So. Who was bringing. Tithes to where? The Jews. Laugh at us. All the time. This is how I learned about tithing. By a Jewish man. He said, hey, hey, Walter, I, I, can't do a good, I can't do a good Jew, so I'm going to do my best. Well, hey, 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 Walter, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you tithe, you, you tithe. Why? I said, because Malachi uh, chapter 3, uh, God said, uh, yeah. what did he say? <laughs> he said, uh, you, 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 you black people, you black people, I do we don't understand. We do not tithe. I said, why you don't tithe? This is y'all's Bible. Y'all gave us Jesus. Unto us, uh, a child is born. Uh, unto us. He is a, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Uh, uh, shlemiel, shlemiel. He said, 
why you tight? You have a temple? I said, yes. My church name is the temple of the most high God of Jones Avenue <laughs> Baptist, whatever. He said, hey, that's not a temple. <laughs> he said, you have Levites? I said, yes. The musicians are playing the Hammond B3 uh, and a bass guitar, a Reckenbacher. Uh, and he's playing a, a lead guitar by Chuck Manhattan. <laughs> I don't know. He said, uh, 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 you, you all is, you all is silly. <laughs> you silly. We do not give a tithe. We have no national temple. It's, it's ruined. How are you all paying a tithe? God was not speaking to you. He was speaking to us. It was for the Levites and the priests. You have priests? Yes. Uh, my pastor, the great right Reverend Dr. Shambach L. Johnson. Uh, we are located on 555 Sycamore Avenue uh, in the great state of Illinois. You, you all are doing it wrong. We we are well off. We we are wealthy. We don't pay a tight. We walk by the sweat of our brow. You black people are lazy. <laughs> you all are lazy. You don't want to work. You want to. You want a magic. Things that happen in your churches, thinking you're giving a tithe, but then you go home and hide your car. <laughs> Forclo you're on the foreclosure list. We, when, when, when winter comes, we pack up our business and go to Florida, and live in Florida until the summer comes back to Chicago. Why? Because we walk by the sweat of our brow. We have jobs. We build businesses. Our money circulate in our community like this. You all are paying a tithe and you're poor. Ah, Shlemiel, Shlemako. <laughs> he woke me up that day. He said, come, let me show you. And we, I pulled out my Bible. And he showed me what I'm showing y'all today. And I screamed. I'm not going to scream, truth rings. I'm not. I said, oh, my God. And guess what, y'all? I was in my 40s. Well, young 40, young 40. Ah, yeah, yeah. I think I might have just turned 40. That wasn't too long ago. That was only in, you know, 16 some years ago. Okay, I might have been my late 30s. Because I've known this a long time. <laughs> late 30s. I was like, what? How am I this intelligent, yet be ignorant? This is why I tell y'all, every time I say something about y'all, I say, ouch, because that was me. I was in my late 30s. Two children. Had a nice job. And, and went to school, y'all. I made a career uh, soaking up, uh, what you call that, student loans and whatever, because I was always in school. And I did not understand how to read because I let somebody else teach it to me from the pulpit. And a Jewish man had to show me the way. This is y'all's problem today. And then Creflo came and y'all got upset for that he's he lied to y'all for 40 years and y'all loved him. He didn't tell y'all the truth and now y'all hate him. <laughs> so how can the church survive without tithing? Number one, who told you to build that church? Huh? Hmm? Who told y'all to build that church? Who told you to get into debt? You was doing just fine having service at that little hotel, at that little stove front, at that little place you was renting. 
you even paid off your little church that your that your that great grandfather built, and you and it and maybe it's it's, it's it's you need to grow out of it. Who told you to build a ten million dollar church? Huh? You was doing fine having two services. It was burning you out. Okay, then you could have. I don't know. Sold the church, maybe got the money and started to rent a place. <laughs> Who taught? Because here's the problem: the average church with a mortgage cannot afford to feed the hungry. You can't afford it. You have a soup kitchen, and you can only afford. To buy a certain amount of food, if the, the the food depository in your town is not giving it to you, or maybe Walmart or some grocery store is not giving you the leftovers that they're going to discard, you you can only have so much. So you can't afford to feed the poor because your mortgage and your expenses are so high. There's not enough left to do the Great Commission. Are y'all not understanding what I'm saying here? The reason why tithe is pushed so heavy is because you have lived off of the backs of the people who've given you a tithe for so long. So you think now this is what you need. It's like a, a person who's being manipulated, who's been raped or molested. They equate that to love. I know women who are being abused, who were abused forever. And they felt that this is the way a man loves me. My ex looked me in my face and said these words. Walter, you never get upset. Why don't you hit me? I said, excuse me? She said, yeah, when we argue, you never get upset. Why don't you just reach out and just, why don't you just hit me? And remorse came over sadness. I went. I wanted to put on sackcloth and ashes. I felt so horrible. Not for me. I felt horrible for her because then I understood why she acted the way she did. She was used to abuse. She equated abuse to he loves me. So she wanted me to slap her. Dana asked a great question. The problem with the, the high mortgage, Dana, is you can't afford to do the great commission of going out there and winning the loss and, and, and tending to try to get some souls. And the people in your neighborhood are not even being serviced because most of the money is going to a mortgage. So, number one, why did you buy that church and build that church? God, did God tell you to do that and to um, hold up all that money that's raised so that Chase and U.S. Bank and Bank of America could pay their bills and loan that money out? To other people who are gonna build some more churches, so what do we do with that? Do you do you get rid of your church, man? Listen, we're in a quagmire here. Maybe you need to sell that church. Maybe you need to downsize. I mean, because what else are you doing? You on a thirty year? Are you mean tell me you can't help nobody until after thirty years? Because that's what the that's the case for most of your many of church, not most of them. You on a thirty year mortgage. And then and, and a lot of churches had to refinance. So it became a 40, 50 year mortgage. <laughs> so what is the answer? Man, I can't tell you what to do with that church. You asked a great question, Dana. But what are you doing, though? And then the people in there, they're, they're suffering because this single mother, y'all making her not only pay tithe and offering, then y'all making her pay extra for pastor's anniversary. And then church anniversary. And then the choir's anniversary. Deacon's 
anniversary. The Usher's Boards, anniversary. And then there's a, a revival. Y'all put a tent outside, extra money. And then something happened to the roof. Uh, that, that more maintenance money, extra, 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 extra. And this woman who's who's got these kids, the husband or the boyfriend, he gone, and she's struggling trying to make it. And then y'all put an assessment on her. It's crazy. I'm not. I'm not even talking about the world dome, man. I'm not even talking about that. But at least they built that thing debt free. They they they. Paid for it cash. At least they did that. But then what did he do after that? Then he continued to rape the people inside. By doing what? Prosperity. Give, 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 give where? Never is. Do they ever say give outside of this house? Never. Nope. Never in the prosperity gospel do you hear them ever say pay your bills first. Never. No. It's always when you give, make sure you give to this place where your membership is. No, don't give to the other church. That's against the Bible. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9 that they were giving to other churches that were struggling. If I was the pastor of World Dome then, based off of 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, I would be using my resources to give to other ministries that are starving or hungry or struggling as well as the poor out there in the world you understand if you're going to follow any type of giving from a church you should be given to another ministry who's doing a good work that's what the scriptures say but y'all took them to malachi so that you can pay a high mortgage bill am i upsetting you i sure hope i am Pay yourself first. You worse than an infidel if you don't pay yourself first. I'm gonna talk about that Thursday. I'm gonna talk about it Thursday. Okay, tithes and offerings. There's a thing called the temple tax. The temple tax. Since y'all like, okay, what about the offering part? Okay, there was a temple tax here, right here. The temple tax was a required uh, of the Jews, m Jewish males, not even the women. <laughs> so y'all making the women give and the women was in order to give a tax and you had to be over 20 to give so y'all making the teenagers give in y'all churches and the money was used for the, the upkeep and maintenance so how are y'all using your tithe for upkeep keep and maintenance you are robbing God if you're going to teach tithing and if that tithe is going to anybody other than the priest or the Levite you are robbing God it, the tithe never went to the maintenance and upkeep of that church. So if your church is doing that, I need you to go in the back room, ask the ch your church, where are the tithes going? If they tell you it's going to the mortgage, you tell them they are robbing God. They are robbers of the tithe. You cannot preach out of Malachi chapter 3 and then take the tithe and pay it off bills. Do you understand? So the, t the tax, the temple tax, that offering part went to the upkeep and maintenance of the temple in Exodus 30. Uh, God told Moses to collect this tax at the time of the, of the census taken in the wilderness. Okay, Nehemiah 10. It seems that the temple tax was paid annually, not just during the census. This half shekel, that's not food, y'all. That shekel, that's a tax, wasn't a lar it wasn't a large sum of money, but roughly equivalent to two days wages. According to the, uh, the, the track tape, uh, Shekalim in the Talmud, the temple tax was collected during one of these Jewish festivals. Y'all had Pentecost because it was for uh, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacle. Why didn't y'all collect a, a temple tax during Pentecost? Hmm? Hmm? The temple tax is also mentioned in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 17, 24th verse. Check this out. Mm -hmm. When Peter was confronted by the religious leaders collecting the tax, the leaders asked Peter, doesn't your teacher pay a temple tax? Mm. 
the leaders uh, may have been attempting to prove Jesus disloyalty to the temple or his violation of the law. If Jesus didn't pay a temple tax, he violated the law. Jesus had a very smart answer. Peter affirmed that Jesus did pay the temple tax. When Peter came into the house where Jesus was, the, the Lord asked him, uh, from whom did the kings of the earth collect duties uh, and, and taxes? Uh, from their own children or from others? Did, did these uh, leaders collect taxes from their own kids? Peter replied uh, that kings collect from others uh, because their children are exempt from paying taxes. Jesus' point was that since the temple was his father's house, Jesus was exempt. <laughs> this is my daddy's house. I don't pay no taxes. Why should the son of God pay a tax to his own father? Mm. But it doesn't end there. Then watch what Jesus does. Even though Jesus, as the son of God and his disciples were exempt, he and the disciples were exempt from these taxes, these, these temple taxes. They would pay the tax in order to not offend the Jewish leaders. So they did it anyway. Matthew chapter 17 and 27, Jesus says, all right, he instructs Peter to throw out a fishing line, which would result in the catch. When, the, when Peter opened the fish's mouth, he found a coin that happened to be the correct amount for the temple tax for him and Jesus. So he paid the tax. Oh, man. Jesus used a question about the temple tax to teach a lesson. Christians are free, but they must sometimes relinquish their rights in order to uphold their witness and not cause other st others to stumble. So render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. They try to get out of also paying a governmental tax. Jesus said, now pay the temple tax. Go ahead and do that because they, have, they, 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 they I don't want to offend them. Even though y'all ain't got to pay no taxes. This is my father's house. But when it comes to the world, he says, whose signa is that on that coin? Uh, that's Caesar. Render to Caesar. What Caesar's? So you people who think that uh, this, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. <laughs> the world and they that dwell. I don't have to pay a tax. Jesus says, no, you do need to pay a tax. Mm -hmm. Come on, CL. It is too late. All right. So if your church is making you pay a tax, just say, hey, this is my father's house. <laughs> this is my father's house. We don't we don't have to pay a tax. Mm. So what do we do with all this, y'all? What do we do with all this? I have one question for y'all is this. How do you track your tithes blessing? Huh? How do you track it? How do you track your tithe blessing? I like to know. Very important question. There's about 400 of y'all here. I want to know from all 400 of y'all as you hit the share button. How do you track your tithe blessing? Because if I hear one more stupid ignoramus comment on social media that every time if I, I keep tithing and the Lord keep blessing me over and over again and, you, and God will give you more if you tithe. My question to you is how do you track it? Hmm? How do you know that everything that you have was based off of tithing? How can you track it on paper? Hmm? Can you? I want to know, because if you can prove it to me and show me that you can track you paying a tenth of your salary to a church and you're blessed that way, I want to know how you do it. Hmm? I want to know. Because here's the thing. If you have paid, let's say you made, you make $100,000 a year. All right, I just blessed some of you. You make $100,000 a year and you pay the church $10,000, okay, in tithing. 
You paid the church $10,000 in tithing for 12 months. All right. My question to you, can you look into your accounting papers, your balance sheets, look around your house, any unexpected checks that came in the mail, I anything, anything. Don't tell me that you went to the, the car lot and you went in there with no money down and they let you ride out of there uh, with a Lamborghini. If you didn't pay cash for that car, you don't have a testimony. You will not let have me try to rejoice with you for getting into debt. I don't rejoice over people who, who buy liabilities. Because the drug dealer, the drug taker, the harlot, the whole, the pimp, the poor man, the world, I mean, the rapist went into the same car lot and got the same deal. No money down. So you can't add that. Number two, you can't add a tax refund check because you worked for that one. Can't do that. You bought a house. Everybody buys houses. You can't add that. Everybody. Non-tithers. Murderers. Everybody buys a house. You, can, you can't add that. I'm, I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to find out where is it. Where you can track it. Because I can, I can say that everything that I do is a result of something else that I did. I can always do that. But until I can prove it on paper. With some kind of testimonial, that means scientific testimonial. Then how do you track it? Okay, you got an unexpected check in the mail for $500. I paid my tithes faithfully. But wait a minute, baby boo. You paid $10,000 over 12 months. And you mean to tell me the only thing you got back is $500 unexpected in the mail? I... Don't trust you with my money. I can't trust you with my money. There's no way I would trust you with my money. It's called ROI. Return on investment. So if you're giving a tithe and you're calling it investment, how is it possible? No corporation could work like that. If you ever went into business for yourself, you would be out of business in three months. The way y'all tithe and then brag about how you tithe. I keep giving tithe and God keeps blessing me over and over again. But you're still basing that off of your job that if you lost that one job, you would lose everything. And you are a tithe payer. You can't be a tithe payer and be working on your job. And worry that you can't miss a day or they would dock your pay or they would write you up or you could get fired because you already three strikes. But yet you're tithing. How is that possible? That you're not even a producer, but yet you're tithing. How is that possible? That if I'm tithing based off of this promise that your church made me. That you said that I, God will open up a window and pull out a blessing I have no room to receive. Yet I have to go to work in order to pay my bills. I still have to go to work to afford life insurance. I still got to go to work to, to have some, some kind of fringe benefit. And if I don't go to work, I could lose everything even though I'm paying a tithe. Do you see the trickery that you have been under all your life and you can't see it. You never tested it. You never question your leaders. You are afraid and Creflo is right. Fear is facing you in your face. Fear. Did you hear his words? He said one, he said religion is sustained by two factors, fear and guilt. You got to keep telling people that you're paying the tithe and you're getting these blessings because if because you got to justify you doing this. You have to. So where is the no room to receive? Have you ever questioned that scripture that these often 
people who get up there and raise the offering on Sunday. Have you ever pulled them to the side? Do that this Sunday. Tell them so Walter Jones sent me. He told me to ask you because every Sunday you get up here and say, I have no room to receive. Here's my bank account. It's almost empty. I'm waiting on the no room to receive and I've been paying a tithe for years. Amazing. There is no scripture to support tithing today. None. None. Not a one. There is no scripture in the Bible that supports tithing today. Not a one. The New Testament brings up tithe. Who brought it up? Jesus did. You're welcome, Stan. Jesus did. And he says, you paying tithe of cumin, sugar, onions, spices. Not one of those items is a dollar. He says, you should do that. Why? Because I'm looking at a temple right there. And there's a Levite and there's a priest inside of there. You got to feed those people. He said, you should do that. I'm, we still under the law. I haven't even gone to the cross yet. That, there's a veil in that temple that's still up. He said, you should do that. Now, as you're going through your process, your order of service, you're forgetting three things which are weightier. Can y'all tell me what weightier mean? Mercy. Justice. Faithfulness. What happened to the mercy of these people who y'all put these tight things over? What about, what about the, the justice, the disjustice that y'all putting on these people? For making them pay a tithe that they can't even afford. And then you in church. Use curse. And scare tactics. To make them pay it. Jesus says you're forgetting. A weightier matter. And try going back to the church. And saying I put a lot of money in here through tithing. Can I at least get my bill paid. We're struggling. That church is going to turn you away. And I heard them say these words. Mine house shall be the house of prayer. We are not a bank. We do not loan money. That's what I heard the church say to me. All of a sudden it's a house of prayer until offering time. It becomes a den of thieves. So how are people continue to be falling victim of this? Easy. Make a promise and never put an expiration date on it. Do you hear me? I'll say it again. If you want to keep people down in bondage and in slavery and in poverty, always make a promise. I'm talking to you who you fake prophets out there and you evan uh, bishops that is and you these apostles all right they're good at this always make a promise and never put an expiration date on it so as long as you are quoting from malachi over the pulpit there will always be expectation even if you live for 90 years you will always feel that it's coming. And some of you feel that it has always been here. You never checked the soup to see if it's too salty. Chef Ramsey would cuss his students out on Hell's Kitchen because they would make this dish and send it out to the patrons. The patrons tasted it, it's too salty, and they'd bring it back. And Chef Ramsey said, you mother boop, boop, boop. How are you not tasting this food? That's what you all are doing. Y'all are going in to, to church. And you're never tasting the ingredients. 
I told y'all Sunday to check the prospectus. The prospectus. Give me the definition again, Rogers, because I'll talk more about that Thursday. You must check the Christian prospectus. And when you don't do that, you walk into an investment plan and you're about to lose your shirt because you've never done a technical analysis on this corporation with the CEO who you don't really know anything about. And you say, uh, put everything on this stock, everything. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. Never put a date. Make a promise. Never date it. I saw in the comment section, I'm going to close this down. I saw in the comment section, somebody said, and I, I've heard this for years. I don't care where my money go. Long as I'm giving it to the church, I don't care what they do in the back. With that attitude, you will always struggle in life. You are not good stewards of your money. If you're going to give your money to an institution and you don't care where it go. That's why UNICEF and, and uh, all these non-for-profit organizations, their CEOs make a lot of money. And a lot of that money goes to administ so-called administrative costs. And you gave money for Haiti. You gave a hundred dollars to Haiti. Two dollars might have gone to Hades. The rest of that money went into administrative costs and salaries. Why? Because you didn't care what they did with the money. So you think because you give into that church, God's gonna bless your money. I'm sorry to tell you, it would be like a farmer who just find any land. Dig a hole, put seed in it, and think that it's going to grow. He is a foolish farmer. When I lived in South Dakota, the farmers showed me they too do technical analysis on the ground. The threshing floor. They check the soil to see if it's right. If it has some kind of life. That's why... America had a dust bowl in the 1930s. The land was not reaping. It wasn't growing crop. That's what you're doing when you put your money into a church. You're putting your money into a church. It's got a hole in it. It's not good ground. And you wonder why you're not being blessed. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a shame in it. So a, pers a prospectus is a printed document, I told y'all Sunday, that advertises or describes a school, a commercial enterprise, a forthcoming book, etc., in order to attract or inform clients, members, buyers, investors, and you all have not checked the prospectus of your faith. Of your faith. So I don't care what they're doing in the back. I just give my money in and I just, I just go home. You are a foolish investor. You're going to wake up with nothing. Mm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So let's answer the question. Let's go home. Because the bunkers, they learned this in my eight weeks course. If you want to be a part of our, our course, our Bible study course. Now, right now we're in the book of Revelation. When Once the website is done, we're going to be teaching uh, the, the whole book of Revelation. Send me an email. Go to giftedfriendsnumber1 at gmail.com. Giftedfriendsnumber1 at gmail.com. It's in the description below on YouTube. Send me an email if you want to be a part of our Bible studies on these really hot, controversial topics. Because we do Zoom classes as well, y'all. Send me an email. Put in the description, you know, what, what, what do you want? 
So th- let's answer the question because I'm doing this tithing master class this week, free charge. <laughs> okay. Tomorrow I'm going to have a musician on and he, he and his wife are doing real well and they don't do all this crazy type of tithing that y'all do. He's going to tell him, tell us why. And then Thursday, I'm going to cap it up. Can the church survive without tithing? Yes, you can. Because I know too many churches that do not teach tithe. They don't tithe and they are debt free. I have pastor friends who do not collect a tithe at their church. As a matter of fact, they do not collect an offering during offering time. I walked into a church in Indianapolis, Indiana, with Natalie, Natalie Bullock, your church. I walked in waiting for them to collect an offering, and they never did. And I thought, okay, y'all, hey, y'all forgot to collect it. They said, Brother Jones, we don't do that here. I walked into another church. They did the same thing. I walked to, it was in South Dakota. I walked into a Catholic church. They did the same thing. I'm like, what's going on? They said, we don't need to do that. Why we don't need to do that? Because we have a mentality of giving. We know that's our house. We built that church. That belonged to us. We know we need to maintain it. You ain't got to have shout to people for 30 and 40 minutes that y'all do in your offering time. Y'all shout to people and take up the whole service. And then by the time you get through shouting to people, the people are tired. By the time the preacher gets up to preach, y'all go to sleep on him because you are exhausted because you were shouted to death. Every week you do the same thing. These churches are like, we are debt free. We know we got to pay to maintain this place. So what do we do? We do it online. Saturday night, we go online and we, we give. Sunday, we ain't got to worry about all that. And if you didn't give online, when you walked in, sir, there was a bucket at the door. You didn't see the bucket? Oh, I didn't see it. You should have gave it the bucket. Okay. But when you leave, put it in the bucket. We don't spend all this time. We have a mentality of giving. You don't build a house and then you gather the, the, your, your family up every month. Okay, everybody. All right. All right, everybody. Listen, this light bill is due. This this gas bill is due. This water is due. Uh, the mortgage and the rent is due. Okay, let's let's. Uh, how much you got, baby? You got okay. All right, baby girl, how much you got? Now, how much you got? You don't do that, do you? No. Many of you have automatic withdrawals, don't you? I know I do, cause I know me. I might forget something, and that money get pulled out of my account automatically. Bing, it's gone. I I don't even look at it. It's just gone. Why? I this is my house. I ain't got to be reminding everybody in this house that the bills are due. It just gets paid. So these churches doing the same thing. They're like, we ain't got to be. This is God's house. We dedicated it to him. We want to praise him and worship. That's all we want to do. I spend all that time offering and manipulation. Y'all going to learn something today. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming you, you, you'll differentiate those who just give free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dana, I will. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Come back Thursday. I got y'all. Oh, we're going to talk about this Thursday. And we're going to read us, uh, some of the scriptures, and I'm going to tell y'all what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. That's all I'm going to do Thursday. I'm going to cap it up. Here's what you're doing right. Here's what you're doing wrong. Here's how now you can come out of poverty, because I'm going to talk about some some investment issues here. I'm going to talk about some savings issues. I'm going to talk about some, some credit score issues. All this stuff that prosperity teachers don't talk about. They can't. Because if your house is... Here's the funny, ridiculous thing about this. If you make more money, you will give more. The typical person will. You will, make, you will, you will give more. If the church has told the people the truth about tithing and offering, if they just told them the truth, the people will give more. God resists, resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. If you stop lying to the people, stop manipulating them, and tell them the truth, listen, we can't afford to stay afloat. This place is ours. If you would just do an automatic withdrawal, do something if you can afford that, do it. Because you all got all kind of subscriptions to all of these 
these uh, TV shows and these live streaming shows and what have you, blah, 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 put us in the, in the, in the subscription bucket too. If you just put us in the subscription, you know, add a little dollar here, there. And I think if we all do this, we could keep this place open. But all these chicken dinners and all this stuff, I'm sorry, y'all. It, ain't, it, ain't, it, ain't, it just ain't working. It ain't working. Shut down these anniversary services. Shut them down. You hear me? Shut them down. If you're going to have an anniversary service, have it as a fundraiser. But shut it down. Shut it down. Get that mortgage paid off. I told y'all the plan on how to do it. I gave y'all the plan a few weeks ago on how to y'all can start paying these mortgages off. You passed this. But you don't want to listen to me. So you can go and pay your 40, 50 year mortgage thingy. Go ahead. Now there's a lot of comments here. I'll read it after the show is over. I wish I could answer some questions here. But I haven't had dinner, so I'm getting ready to go. All right. This is really, this is sad. I hate to have to, you know, beat people up like this. I hate it. Y'all think I enjoy this kind of stuff. I hate it. Absolutely detest it. I detest it. But Creflo opened up the eyes of many of you. You wanted to know. Here I am. Creflo may not ever see this. All right. Because everybody's talking about him. But thank God. That God used him this time to come forward to open up this conversation. Now we all can talk about it. His friends are upset. They are peed off with him to the point right now that they're putting all kind of stupid things on social media right now. The most dumbest things that you're hearing about tithing are resurfacing on Facebook uh, and, and YouTube and Twitter. The dumbest crazy stuff that makes no sense and y'all are soaking it up you're hitting the hearts the like button you're hearing the share you're commenting you're saying amen 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 yes pastor go ahead pastor and not one of them studied it not one of them they heard from this prominent man of mind and woman of god and they just said amen amen because when i'm giving my tithe boy mo my bills are paid yeah my bills are paid too and i don't pay a tithe Y'all bills are paid, and y'all don't pay tithe. Uh, the worldly people's bills are paid, and they don't pay tithe. You need to justify a habit, and you can't even track it. You can't even track it. If you stop paying the tithe, and you still be on your job paying your bills, your bills are going to get paid. Hear me. If you stop paying tithe right now, this is the test. I'm not telling you to stop paying tithe, all right? You do what, what makes you feel good. If you stop paying tithe right now and keep paying your bills for the next 60, 90, 120 days, your same bills will get paid. I'd like to know what would be your excuse then why your bills are being paid. But you can't do that because you are afraid that you might get cursed, even though you keep saying, no, we're not under that, that kind of thing. But guilt, again, what did Creflo Dollar say? Religion is sustained by two factors, fear and guilt. So you won't do that. You will never do that test, some of you. So if you're going to give a tithe, Give it to the church so that your church can be sustained because evidently if you stop giving it, your church may suffer. So go ahead and continue to take care of your house. Pay your tithe. You will not go to heaven or hell for doing it or not doing it. You understand? The reason why we went live today and we've been going live for the past 10 years is this. Stop putting an old covenant on the new covenant church. Do you understand? We are up under a better covenant. Stop putting curses on the people. You don't even have the power to do that, but you're scaring them. You are sinning when you do that. You're going against the scriptures and you're adding to the scripture as well as taking out of the scripture. You are committing a grave sin when you do that. So if you want to pay tithe, you pay tithe and you take care of that house that you've said, God said that you need to build. You take care of that. All right. Nobody's stopping you from doing that. 
but do not come over to my house and tell me I have to do it or I'm going to be cursed with a curse because it feels good to sit in this cursed chair. You understand? Meanwhile, I'm going to keep going live and build up, help build up this kingdom because the more money you all make, the more you'll be able to give to the poor and the needy and the widows and the orphans and the strangers because uh, Deuteronomy 14 says that after a certain period of time, what about three years, I think it is, you're supposed to give your tithes away. And you tithe payers don't ever do that because you said this tithe belonged to the Lord. No, it's been three years now. So if you're going to tithe by the Old Testament, you're supposed to give to strangers, poor people, that is, and widows and orphans. You never do that. Your tithe, yeah, you never do that. So miss me with your lying about tithing. <clears throat> the average tithe payer don't understand tithe. My job is to help you understand it. And I hope I did today. Tomorrow I'll have a young man on, Barris Bolton, great musician. He's going to talk about what he and his wife is doing, how they give, and then we'll cap it off. God, we thank you for your, your, your blessings. We thank you for these people who are here. Many comments came in. I'll read them later. People had concerns. Others are being freed as we speak right now. I am looking at an array of saints around this country who's watching this show right now being free. Many of them right now are being freed. What a great feeling to know that they are being freed from this bondage that man has put on them and their families. Their forefathers are gone now. They were in error. Forgive them. They're gone. Just forgive them. They're gone. Now, saints, it's your turn. The millennials and the generation Z's and that generation after that is coming up. And if they decide to remain in your churches under that tithing thing, you now have a, 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 a right and, and the privilege of teaching them the right way to give and not on the compulsion. God, we thank you for this. We we'll give your name the praise and the glory shall be yours. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. 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 If you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel. We do this. Every night, y'all, we call it the bunkers because eh, we throw rocks and we hide in the bunker and we, we look out and see what the world is doing after we threw rocks and cause controversy. Controversy, all right? Hit the thumbs up, all right? There's about 400 of y'all left over there. Hit the thumbs up and this gospel will be shared all over the world. Hit the bell notification, ding, then you know I'm live, all right? If you're interested in some Bible classes the way we teach over here, hit me an email. The description is below. Gifted friends number one at gmail.com. I'll put you on the email list. Now, be patient. All right. More and more bunkers are joining every day. So some of you bunkers who've been with me a long time, if I'm not getting to your email fast enough, be patient. I'm building my staff. All right. I can't get to you fast like I used to. I can't. All right. But I trust me, I see every email. I can't respond in the in the in the way I used to. Why? New bunkers are joining up every day. It is it's been a blessing to see all these requests coming in. So because I'm one guy right now who checked that one email, you got to be patient. Don't be saying I feel left out. You don't talk to me anymore. Listen, first of all, some of y'all are trying to be too common with me anyway. All right. Some of you are just trying to be too common. You ain't that you ain't that common with your own pastor. Now, don't take my niceness and my I use terms of endearment, what have you. Don't take that as I can talk to him all day long. You will not because I will not be answering my my phone and talking to you all day. If you send me a text. I will respond to your text, but don't be sending me texts 30 minutes straight. 
I can't have that kind of conversation with you. I don't work a nine to five. Do you understand? And so because I don't work a nine to five, I don't have time off. I don't have all these benefits y'all have. I can't take paid vacations. I can't, I can't do that. If I don't work, me and baby girl and Amir don't eat. So I don't have a whole lot of time to be talking to y'all in the inbox and the emails. And the, all right, if you're going to send me something, I will respond. And you may respond back. And then y'all got to understand that there's 50 other people waiting in the queue, waiting on you and me to stop having that conversation. You understand? Thank you, Travell. He's an introvert, y'all. Remember that. So I, I, I can't spend a whole lot of time. And I can't be, y'all can't, I can't be common with you all. <laughs> I just can't. All right. So don't tie up a whole lot of my time. All right. Uh, with, with, with stuff. I don't care what it is. I will pray with you for you. I talk to bunkers on the phone. We pick up the phone and we talk, but, but consider that there are others who need that time. So shorten up your time as much as you can. And so that I can help someone else. All right. Be considerate. Or we are both going to be going down the bankruptcy court trying to figure out, hey, I, I show Miss Elder Jones, show Miss him. Boy, I tell you, I used to talk to him hours upon hours upon hours. Huh? Poor guy, he should have been working while I was taking up his time for hours. Show should have been, show, I, I can't, I can't loan him $200,000. I can't loan him that. He should have been working. <laughs> there you go, Michelle. <laughs> he should, he should. I don't know why he talked to me all them hours. Now you gone, you all, your bills are paid, y'all, your, your bellies are full, you gone, <laughs> having a good life, and I'm struggling. I got to get back in the car and Uber all night long because you was on the phone with me for hours. No, I ain't, I ain't doing that. I'm smart now. I'm, I'm too smart for that. <laughs> I'm too smart. All right? And uh, don't be getting all upset either. Don't send me no text or or email saying, would you talking to me? Would you talking to me? I'm talking to everybody. <laughs> Don't be talking about I'm, I'm offended. You were talking to me. I, I thought we had something. Listen, <laughs> if the shoe fits, <laughs> if the shoe fits, I'm talking to everybody. <laughs> Don't be. And one thing I've realized about the Saints, y'all get, get, get so offended over the smallest little things. I'm trying to live a healthy life. I should be in bed right now, but I go to, I go live at nine o'clock, which is ten o'clock over there on the East Coast, and I'm trying to live a healthier life by doing things smarter. And then I'm dead now, and y'all come to the funeral. So <laughs> it's a shame how that man died. He he should have rested. He show he should have ate more, you know. Yeah, I know I had fifty questions every night, but he didn't have to answer them. <laughs> that would be y'all's answer. <laughs> All right. I can't apologize for none of this. That's it. Can y'all the bottom line? <laughs> now, now you saying bottom line, stop tithing. No, just don't, don't tithe under the law. You can tithe, you can do whatever you want to with your money. If your tithing is going to help the church, do that. But don't do it under composure. If the time comes when you can't tithe, don't do it. God says, take care of your house. If your bills are not paid and you giving that money to the church, you are worse than an infidel. You understand? You're sinning. If your light bill and gas bill ain't paid, don't give that church no money. And I still go to church every Sunday. And they're listening to me right now. I don't care. If you got a shut off notice coming in your house and you trying to give money to the church, you are a sinner. Do you hear what I'm saying? You are sinning. Pay your bills. This is what something the prosperity teachers will never tell you to do. They always tell you to give till it hurts. The Bible says don't give till it hurts. And then y'all heard in church, give till it hurts. They are sinning and you are sinning. How long are you going to sit there and be manipulated as old as you are? All right. So if you're going to give to the church, give if you got it. If you don't, don't give it. And Sleep good tonight. You understand? They'll find a way to get that money. Who told you to build that church? <laughs> I got to go. I'll see you all tomorrow night at 9 Central Standard Time. All right? Love y'all. Pray for me. And um, if you don't love me, 
You won't. You ain't getting to heaven. <laughs> I don't tithe at all. Don't go to church. Bills paid. <laughs> Take. <them. laughs> okay. Thank you for the birthday, Kenyatta. <laughs> all right. Gotta go. I think Amir want to say something. Y'all. Y'all always want to hear from my grands, my great, my not my great grandson. I ain't that old. My wonderful grandson. <laughs> I right, see y'all. See y'all later. I'll read the comments tonight. Love you too, Terry. Favorite always. Chatting with the Collins. All y'all. Beverly Williams. Man, I love all y'all. I love y'all. I love Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Sir Walter Jones Show. <laughs> Goodbye.